Sometimes initials matter. Your initial, your middle initial, your first initial, your last name, initials. You put your initials on a rental contract, on a lease, on a mortgage, on a credit card. You put your initials in all kinds of places. Sometimes you carve them into a tree with a young love by a park bench and a big oak or maple tree. Sometimes initials are meant to signify something big and grandiose, something that should be aspired to or lived up to. For instance, your degree, if you got a BA honors, that's a four-year degree in some form of the liberal arts. If you got a THM, it's a master of theology. And if you got a PhD, my father would have said that's piled higher and deeper so here's a tip to my father, whose words still echo in my head. Living rent-free, as they say. And once in a while, they get called up. I summon the demons of Christmas past, like Bob Cratchit, um, Scrooge, rather. Initials. What does that got to do with anything? Initials matter. Whether you're qualified or not matters. Whether you're an expert in something give testimony about something. It matters. What are your credentials? What are your initials after your name? Well, how about this for a set of initials? The QCJO. QCJO. I was not really familiar with this until it broke on the social media that I follow. And it came about because I have been long waxing eloquent, erudite, and trippingly flowing words of derision in the general direction of fake news and fake media, especially in Canada, with outlets that I thought were anything but reputable organizations, but some people that I know continue to get sourced uh, information, their news sourced from places like this. And the one in particular that's surfacing this week goes by the name of Rebel, Rebel News. And so what I have been reading about is the court filing, federal court decisions, Rebel News Network Limited versus Canada, represented by the Attorney General's office. And this was dated September 18th. So this is a recent filing. And it outlines the background of the case and the judgment and the reasons. And in the background statement, it read this. The respondent represents the Minister of National Revenue, who, through the Canada Revenue Agency, the CRA, determined that the applicant, Rebel News Network Limited, has not engaged in the production of original news content and was not entitled to the QCJO designation, the Qualified Canadian Journalism Organization letters. And so that was the claim. So somebody was saying they are not what they say they are. And that was the federal government. And specifically, this is a finance charge because there's tax benefits. If you have that designation, you have a special status. But it has to be recognized and you got to prove what you are. Well, the proof was not in the pudding, as they say. And Rebel decided to fight the ruling. Rebel challenges the CRA decision on several grounds. Rebel argues, and I'm reading from the document here, Rebel argues that the decision is not based upon the evidence that was before the CRA. Rebel argues that the CRA interpreted the words, quote, original news content, unquote, in a matter that is not consistent with the purpose and intent of the act or the CRA's guidance on the income tax measure to support journalism. Rebel News sought a court order to reverse the decision and designate Rebel as QCJO pursuant to the act. 
And the rebel also challenged, raised a challenge under the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms, Part 1 of the Constitution Act of 1982, being Schedule B to the Canada Act of 1982, passed in the UK in 1982. For the reasons below, this is the ruling, I am dismissing the judicial review because I have concluded that the CRA decision is reasonable. I am dismissing Rebels' charter arguments. Well, there you go. That's the summary, and that was issued by the Attorney General in the case of Rebel News Network Limited versus Canada. And if you can read the document, you'll find all kinds of um, specifics. And my intention here is not to go into the specifics so much as to say it's long been my belief after reading sourced news from Rebel News that it is nothing that qualifies as journalism. Instead, it qualifies as something else. And this would be a fair summary of it. This is a post on Twitter by Paul Champ. I don't know who this fellow is, so I haven't looked into him. Maybe I should. Apparently, he's an Ottawa lawyer with a national practice. He's a specialist in employment, labor, and human relations, and human rights, rather. Um, the federal court confirms, this is his Twitter post, that Rebel News is not engaged in the production of original news content and is an outlet more interested in activism, not news. And that is where I found the link to the original document. And that's uh, kind of interesting that this is making its way through the Canadian news or social media anyway. Uh, it's official. They are not a qualified Canadian news organization. So there you go, the latest in the news. So where do you get your news? Is it important? Of course it's important. Now you can check out Rebel News for yourself and you can find its uh, bias readily apparent, discernible, palpable, and you can understand that when they are forwarding material that does not seem to be original in content, but rather piecemeal stuff. Is this going to come from that new DOJ in the United States charge that a Canadian social media outlet was actually taking money from the Russians to promote Russian content about Canada, the US and Europe? I think this is part of the fallout, but I'm not sure. Timing seems to be coincidental, maybe not causal. So we got to be sure that we separate these things out. It's just the timing seems uh, very, not suspicious in a bad way, coincidental. Like here we have the DOJ talking about this stuff, and here is the court filing being released by the federal uh, court in Canada, the Attorney General. So I find that all interesting. So what's been going on? Um, Ezra Levant. I uh, don't know if you know that name, but you should look him up. Fraudster. Hmm, that's an interesting word. Fraud. Yeah, that's a legal term, too. So making stuff up should be a crime, shouldn't it? Not making stuff up should be truth. So if you speak the truth, then truth, so be it, should be provable in court. Well, apparently it was provable in court, and the demonstrable result is in that court filing. There you go. I've been saying it for years. <laughs> There's a good, cute diagram following this posting. It's got the standard bell curve. Everybody knows that shape of the curve, and we sort of put people on it. The middle is where most Canadians fall, and then you have your left portion, maybe 30%, your right portion, maybe another 30%. But most of us fall in the middle, and that's now shifted. The balance point, the 50% mark, has now shifted so far right <laughs> that the majority of people who are posting on social media, especially on Twitter, are far right. 
not right, which now appears, if you were a traditional conservative, you would appear slightly left of center in this uh, bell curve. And the left would be so far left, you wouldn't recognize it. Although the left is still really just left of center, whether that's the NDP or the Liberal Party. So things have changed. Or as I said to my friends, the Conservative Party of today, CPC, is not your grandfather's or Brian Mulroney's or John Diefenbaker's or Joe Clark's or Kim Campbell's party. It may be a residual of Stephen Harper's party, which was formed out of the war between the right and the far right waged under the name of the Reform Party of Canada, which split the Conservatives from the progressive Conservatives to the right, far right Conservatives, which then became known as the CPC. Remember that came about from Preston Manning, who was leaning a little far to the right in the things that he was advocating. Although I did like the idea that he had about a Tripoli e Senate, elected and effective. You have power and you have to be elected, not appointed. There are some good ideas. Don't throw everything out just because you disagree with it. Take what you can that's good. That helps all Canadians, not some, the majority of Canadians, not the minority. There will be a challenge coming up. Will Jagmeet Singh go the way of the dodo? Will the block hold up? Will the challenge be overturned? Will Pierre Polyev even show up to cast his vote of non-confidence? Coming up next week, The Jim and Terry Show. Bye-bye for now.